Good morning. Good morning, everyone. So good to see your faces today. God is so good. We had a wonderful time with the Lord and each other yesterday at the ladies' luncheon or women's luncheon. It was really good. Such a blessing. If you haven't been, you know, make a, it's always the second Saturday, so make, you know, make some time, see if you can, even if you can come just a few times in the year, God is always meeting us. Not just that, but the ladies also share, and I got so blessed for what they were sharing. You know, the Holy Spirit is speaking through us all, so it's so wonderful. So let's come on in, and let's worship the Lord together. Let's stand up. And give him all the praise, all the glory, because he's worthy. Amen? Amen. 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 Good morning, everybody. Good, morning. Good to see you, everybody. Um, I'm joining for praise the Lord, or King of Kings, Lord of Lords, because he's good all the time. Amen? Amen. Sorry, technical problems. So I would like to invite you to stand up, open your hearts, and let's praise with all our hearts. Amen. Amen. Let's praise. Yeah. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise in the valley. I praise on the mountain. I praise him and sure. I praise when the doubt is. I praise when the numbers. I praise when surrounded. Just praise in the water. Name is drawing. As long as I'm breathing, I got a reason to praise the Lord, oh my soul. Control. My praise is a weapon, it's more than a sound. My praise is a shout that brings Jericho down. As long as I'm breathing, I got a reason to praise the Lord, oh my soul. Oh my 
my God is alive. How could I keep it inside? I won't be quiet. My God is alive. How could I keep it inside? I won't be quiet. My God is alive. How could I keep it inside? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let everything that has breath, yes. praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let everything yes. that has breath, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let everything that has breath, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, yes. Woo. hallelujah, praise him, hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord God. Yes. I will not be yes, quiet. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. No. Oh, 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 yes. Shout it out and go. Jesus, we shout your name. Jesus, we make your praise go. You are glorious. Glory. Glorious, Lord. Thank you. My God, you Forever and ever, how great your name. Your love remains forever and ever. You stay the same. Shout it out, shout it out. If you know he's good, sing it out, sing it out. For the Lord is good. Shout it out loud, you are glorious, glorious, shout it out and glorious, make it loud and Jesus we shout your name, Jesus we make your praise go. The Lord is good. Shout it out loud. You are glorious. Glorious. Shout it out and glorious. Make it loud and Jesus, we shout your name. Jesus, we make your praise go. Shine for all the world to see. 
you are glorious. Sing it to me. Shine. Yes. Shine, Jesus, to you. Shine for all the world to see. You are glorious. Yes. Shine, Jesus, to you. Shine for all the world. You are glorious. You are glorious. You are glorious. so grateful with you, Lord. Yeah. Amen. Oh. We declare that our God is greater. Our God is powerful. A mighty God. Amen. Water you turn into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you, none like you. Into the darkness you shine, out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you, none like you. Our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. Into the darkness you shine, out of the ashes we rise, there's no one like you, none like you, 
Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God, our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. My hiding place. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then God will send again. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then God will send again.
God of covenant and of faithful promises. Time and time again, you have proven you'll do just what you said. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain steadfast. And let my heart learn when you speak a word, it will come to pass. Great is your faithfulness to me. Great is your faithfulness to me. From the rising sun to the setting sun, I will praise your name. Great is your faithfulness to Though the earth may pass away, your word remains the same. Yeah, your history can prove there's nothing you can't do. You're faithful and true. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain steadfast and let my heart learn when you speak the word. It will come to pass. Great is your faithfulness to me. Great is your faithfulness to me. From the rising sun till the setting, same I will praise your Great is your faithfulness to me. I put my faith in Jesus. My anchor to the ground, my hope and firm foundation, he'll never let me down. I put my faith in Jesus, my anchor to the ground, my hope and
there's anybody that needs prayer but if you need prayer come on up right now I don't know I mean maybe nobody does but do you know anyone need any prayer this morning you're like man I could use some prayer this morning come on up come on up Joanna come on up I just feel like there's some that just really need and an anointing is here you know when the presence of God is there you gotta jump in the pool you know what I'm saying okay yep there it is all right come on up prayer team come on up and pray Barbara can you come on up and pray with some of these ladies Thank you, Jesus. A little, little too hot. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Just over there on the end there. Praise you. Just continue to worship. Continue to worship. If you need prayer, come on up. There you go, Dave. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Just, it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, thank you, Jesus, that you are above every situation. You're above every trial. You're above every pain. I know some who just just dragged themselves in this morning. Lord, I thank you that you are meeting those needs in Jesus' name. Lord, you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. The same miracle-working God. You do miracles. You do miracles, and we believe it. We proclaim it in Jesus' name. I thank you for each person here that you're doing miracles. And Come on, pray with me, saints, too. Pray or worship, pray or worship. Pray or worship. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name. Jesus, you deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name. Jesus. You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name. Jesus, you deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Praise you, Jesus. We'll just let them wrap up there. Praise the Lord. Just, just give them a minute. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We're not in a hurry, everybody. Just continue to pray. Just continue to pray and just thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your presence. Thank you that you answered prayer. Lord, I, I thank you for the answered prayers that many of us have been praying for Israel. And Lord, how you've been protecting them. And we give you praise and thanks for that, Lord Jesus. Lord, and I, I ask for continued protection for your people. For your people. Lord, that you be glorified in all of this. I pray they come to know you in mass. I pray for revival in that nation. And I pray for safety. Lord, do it. Do what people can't do. Divine protection, I pray. And we believe it and proclaim that over the nation of Israel, the people of Israel. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Well, praise the Lord. That was good. Praying. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated for a minute. Well, most of you are already seated, though. That's all right. You never know. Praise the Lord. Well, a um, couple... What are you doing? They got muted for a sec. We got a couple of announcements there. Uh, uh, a lot of exciting stuff going on. So we're both doing it. Come on up there, baby doll. So my cutie. There we go. She still loves me. Yeah. I still love her. We do. Kids go like, get a room. That's what the kids say. All right. See you guys. Indio, you want to preach? No. But... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just, you never know what's going to come out of my mouth. All right, better stop. And now read the thing, announcements. Okay, um, I'm excited because we are going to be finally dedicating the prayer room and library right over there Yay! next week. So Kay and Charity will be here. I'm going to preach a special sermon it's going to be like seven things I learned from Pastor Joe. I don't know if I got seven or five or ten. I'm just going to throw out a number. Seven things I learned. There's a lot of things, but I'm going to pick some and whatever I... It's going to be fun. I'm actually really looking forward to preaching it. It's just going to be fun. So even if you didn't know Pastor Joe, you'll enjoy it. And Kay and Charity will be here, and they're going to get up and say some stuff. And so if you haven't looked in there yet, it's, it just looks beautiful. They've just you know, done a real jo good job. The floor is shiny and everything. And so we're, we're excited about it. And if you want a book, go ahead, grab a book off the shelf there. You don't have to sign it out. Just grab it. If you want to put it back when you're done, put it back. We're no, nobody's policing you, but we'll just see what happens. If we run out of books, we'll just get more, you know. Is that right? And, and so we're excited about that. Also, we're excited about the new playground for the kids. So, yeah, we're getting that. So, so this, is, this is us living our values, you know, because we care about the whole family. And, and it, it took some time. We had to take down the old playground because we didn't want any children to be impaled or hurt or anything. So that's one of our values, too, is not having children impaled by sharp objects. 
Um, so the council voted to, to put in a nice new playground, but we need a team to put it together. So if you want to be on that team, Paul, uh, if you want to be on that team, anybody, just sign up in the back. And if somebody wants to kind of put a star by your name, if you want to run the team, like if you feel like you can do it. All right. I don't, I don't want to call out names, Richard, or nobody. Just so. But yeah, guys, ladies, whoever wants to do it. And so it's going to be exciting. And we, we really, we, we can buy it any time. We just have to find the guys that want to, or ladies that want to put it together. So uh, that's, uh, that's going to be fun. I can't wait to see that go up. Honey, you have some announcements, too. I'm going to go really quickly because we have a few today. Um, Some food was donated yesterday, so we have food in the refrigerator in the kitchen. So if anyone needs any food, go help yourself. Take what you can. Um, um, I think it's the big silver one, the big silver refrigerator. Oh, even better. They're going to put it out on the table so you, so you know what is what belongs to the church and what's free. That helps. So, yeah. <laughs> They'll be taking everything. Yeah. <laughs> so, perfect. So, yes, please we help probably, yourself. We probably should let people go through that fridge. There's so much stuff in there. It's so true. We'll clean it all out. Um, then, also, we have our family photos ready. I don't know if you've seen them in the back. Please grab a photo. If you don't see yours, please let me know. Are they beautiful? The photos are so beautiful. Oh my gosh. So, and then we're going to also email you the digitals of all the other ones. So we chose the best ones, in our opinion. Um, But then after that, you just, we're going to give you all of those. So you'll be getting that either Monday or Tuesday, all the digitals, okay, Uh, by email. And then... We have our Bible study this week, and Indio is going to be teaching. Amen. He's going to be teaching on Ezekiel uh, 38. That's right. And it is going to be uh, basically uh, using the Bible, explaining what's going on today in today's events and how it applies. And it's going to be really good. 7 p.m. this Wednesday. And I think that's it. Yep. I made it through. All right. So we're going to uh, worship the Lord in our giving. So ushers, if you can please come forward. We're going to pray for the giving. Uh, Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to give into your kingdom. We thank you for all the blessings you've given us. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, that um, we can never outgive you. You are just do above all that we can ask or think. And we are expecting a harvest of souls in this neighborhood and in our families. And we expect it in Jesus' name. Thank you. Amen. So come on forward. You can give in the back. You can also give online. Children's ministry, uh, if your kids are age 5 to 10, we meet in the back there where Cookie is. And make sure you sign them in, get their temperature taken, and the nurseries are ready in session. So greet one another, give a hug to one another. And as I always say, if you are a visitor today, after you're a visitor just once and then you're family.
All right. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. I can see I already missed a lot of you. Man, I tried to get everybody. That's all right. I just watch it. I like watching, you know. I try to let it settle a little before I interrupt. Got to reach the 50%. They like each other. They can't help it, Lee. Lee. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right. Come on in. Grab a seat. Grab a seat. Praise the Lord. All right, let's pray. Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you that it is awesome. I thank you that it's sharper than a two-edged sword. I thank you that it cuts and it heals and it transforms and inspires and challenges and does all kinds of great things in our lives. And I just, we just choose, Lord, to receive. Just tell them, I choose to receive your word today, Lord. I want to receive. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Just I want to receive in Jesus' name. Amen. I tell you, you know what? Hungry people get fed, right? Amen. Hungry people eat, right? You know, you got a little kid and they're hungry. You're going to feed them, right? Amen. 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 All right. Well, Matthew 9, 37, then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. And I, that's all my review. I don't really have any review today from one of the last ones. But if you want to watch those, last week was great. We talked about just the different things that can hold us back and just how we need freedom from, from not just sin, but just pain and trauma of the past. They, they have the same result in our lives. And so watch that. It was, it was good and impactful. And that was great, all the people coming up for prayer. I just, you know, just, you got to like, sometimes I just sense it like right there. And I, I don't know if anyone's going to come up, but you know what? I'm like, the presence of God is here. You just got to move with the presence of the Lord. Amen. Sometimes like if you're home and you just kind of feel the presence of the Lord, just jump in it. Like, just start worshiping them. Turn on the music right there. Just pull out your Bible, whatever. Just jump in the river when you feel that flow. Amen? So um, today I want to talk about the power of invitation. Years ago, I was invited one time to a young adult home group. And it was, it was pretty cool. I had to go there late because I was coming off of work, and I called them up, and I was like, hey, I'm running late. And little did I know... That at this home group, I would meet this really hot Panamanian lady, young lady. And, and it was love at first sight for one of us. It was, I don't know, at first sight for her. It was love at first sight for me. And then it was like for second sight for her, it was like, nope. And then third sight was like, maybe. Then it was like, nope. And then maybe. Then finally, like eighth sight, she was like, all right, this is the one for me. So, and then we stayed there. We just stayed at number eight. So we're good. But I didn't know, just from being invited to that little Bible study by, I think it was Jeff and Rochelle Boyce was their names. And, and who knew that that little invite would change the course of my life. Amen got four kids and just 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 from going to that little bible study that somebody invited me to and you know Jesus was the best inviter of all time he was really good at it you know he went and got all the disciples James and John he sees them fishing and he's like hey guys follow me I'll make you fishers of men like they don't know what's going on I was like I don't know what that means they didn't know they didn't know, like, he's like the Messiah. People are talking, this is the Messiah. All right, let's go. And they left their nets. They left their boats. They left their dads. They're like, see ya. We're following this guy. We don't know what's going on, but we're going. I mean, he was a good inviter. He got all the disciples. I mean, Zacchaeus. Remember Zacchaeus? Remember in, how many, like, old people sung the song when you were little in Sunday school? Come on, ready? Sing it. Zacchaeus, we little man. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> he was a wee little man. Now, I'm not going to make, I'm not going to make short people jokes, you know, that I don't believe in belittling people, so. 
Oh, all right. I thought that would be funnier. Maybe they didn't get it. Was it not funny or you didn't get it? I don't know. Which one was it? I guess not funny, right? All right. So, sorry, short people. I didn't mean to make fun of you. But just get. You're not short. <laughs> oh, your mom? Yeah, your mom is short. Yeah. <laughs> I'm moving on. Moving on. So, Zacchaeus, back to Zacchaeus. The little guy, little Zacchaeus, he's up in a tree because he couldn't see. And so Jesus says, Jesus invites him, right? Jesus invites Zacchaeus to dinner at Zacchaeus' house. Think about that. I mean, you're a pretty good inviter if you can be like, hey, Zach, guess what? We're all going to your house for dinner. You're buying. And Zach's like, Yes! It's like, wow, you're a good inviter. Like, if you can do that, I'd be like, hey, Gary, my whole family would come into your house for lunch today. We want something good. You'd be like, woo, right? You know, you're, you, I'm not that good an inviter, so I, you know, I'm not going to try it. But Jesus did it. I mean, he was good at inviting. He invited us. He says, come all to me who are heavy laden and who labor, and I will give you rest. Right? He's still inviting us today. He's still doing great things. You know some other great inviters? And I say inviters slash bringers because this kind of jumps ahead a little bit. But when you look at the inviters, they do more than just inviting. They do bringing. Watch this. Like, Like, remember the guys that when Jesus was in the house and these four guys with the paralytic who couldn't move himself... Four guys, they're like, hey, it's full. We can't get in the door, so let's go on the roof and cut a hole in the roof, right? I mean, they vandalized some stranger's home so they could bring somebody to Jesus. That's commitment, like best wingman ever, right? They're like, we got you, bro. Let's go. We're getting in there. We're getting you to Jesus. And they brought him in, and Jesus is like, your sins are forgiven. And bam, he's healed, They just brought him to Jesus. The woman at the well, remember her? Jesus, you know, we talked about it a few weeks ago, and he he prophetically reveals things about her life and everything, and she just, she goes back to the town, the town where nobody liked her, right? She was not that popular. I mean, well, I guess she was popular with some of the guys, but that's another story. You know, the women didn't like her in the town. She didn't have a lot of friends, Right? And she's like, everybody, I found the Messiah. Come out and see him. And like the whole town comes out to meet Jesus. That was a pretty good inviter. Pretty good. Pretty good. John, John 140, watch this. And one of the two who heard John speak and followed Jesus was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother, Simon, and he said to him, we have found the Messiah, which means the Christ. And listen to this. Watch this. Andrew told his brother Peter everything he knew about Jesus at that moment, which was almost nothing. He's like, I heard. He didn't even know what the Messiah meant, right? Because we know they thought he was going to deliver him, and they didn't really understand that the Messiah was delivering him from sin. So he he, he knew nothing. He's just like the, the the Messiah. Like I think we found him. This is this is him. Just let's go. And he brought him. And, and John 1.45, and Philip, he found Nathanael, and he said to him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law spoke, and also the prophets wrote Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Philip, I love this part. Philip goes, Come and see. I don't know. Like He's like, Anything good from Nazareth? He'd be like, Hmm, I say. Should I say, no. Be like saying, like, from New Jersey? He's from New Jersey? Really? No. Just kidding. <laughs> Any New Jersey? Who's from New Jersey? Raise your hand. Sorry. I, you know. New Yorkers and New Jerseys, they like, they fight. Any New Yorkers? All right, we got more New Yorkers, so I'll just crack on New Jersey then. So I remember I met this, this, these two people, and I was working at Disney, and one, I'm like, hey, where are you guys from New York? And he's like, He's like, uh, or, where are you from? He's like, oh, I'm from New York. And I'm like, the other guy, oh, where are you from? He's like, oh, yeah, me too. And then he's like, oh, what part? And he goes, well, actually, New Jersey, but same thing. And the New Yorker was like, not having that. 
He's like, it ain't New, New Jersey, ain't New York, you want to be, you know, I'm like, whoa, all right, don't fight. But Nathaniel, he's like the New Yorker. He's like, New Jersey, Nazareth. He's like, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And I just, you know what's cool? Philip doesn't like, well, you know, here's the scripture. And he didn't, you know, and we can do that. We can share answers and stuff. He didn't, he says, I, I don't know. What? Just come and see. Let's go. Let's find out. You know what? We don't have to always answer every single question. Right? And someone asks you a question, say, I don't know. Come on, we'll go ask Pastor Joanna. Yeah. <laughs> or Pastor John. Or somebody. Just, I love it. I love it. I, I, don't, I don't mind hard questions because I'm not embarrassed if I don't know. I'll be like, ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> it's, just, it's so much easier when you learn in life just be real instead of like pretending. We were talking about this with somebody. I'm like, yeah, just it's. You know, two faces is hard to keep up with. One is easy. You know, just be real, right? And so, yeah, man, I love it. People ask questions. You know what we, we should do? We used to do in the past was we have Q&A Sunday, and everybody writes questions, and we put them in a, in, a, in a little bin, and then next week we just pull them out of the hat, and I just randomly answer them. Would that be fun? So you can ask any theological question. Usually we do it like in the summer or something when it's slow and just kind of mix it up. And it's still, it's like a sermon. It's like a bunch of little sermons and it's really a lot of fun. So man, yeah, we'll do that again. You want to do that? Yeah? All right. Cool. We'll vote. Church vote. How many don't want to do it? All right. So. <laughs> Arnett, you're going to love it. I promise. You'll be like, you know what, Pastor John? Yeah, I see you there. I got you got it. That was good. That was good. Right? But anyway, yeah, just he didn't answer all his questions. He just brought them to Jesus. He's like, let's just bring them to Jesus and see what happens. And you know what happens when we just bring people to Jesus? Amazing stuff. Amazing. I mean, practically the whole Samaritan town came out and all started following Jesus. You remember that? They're like, this whole, that was when Jesus said, look unto the harvest. It's, it's plentiful. Remember when he said that? He was looking at all them people coming out of the town. And he's like, look at all these people. The harvest is plentiful, but the reapers are few. Right? And he's like, that happened then when she's, this one lady brought out this whole town. Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't it be great? Like one person goes like something down, downtown St. Pete or something. They're like, hey, everybody. And they all walk in and we're like, what is going on? And we just talk, just be Jesus. Because amazing stuff happens. Watch this. In, in John 1, Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, and he said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed in whom there is no deceit. And Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? And Jesus answered him, Before Philip called you when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. So he's like, like Jesus is showing his... You know, omniscience, he's kind of showing the Holy Spirit sees everything and then is telling him everything. And so Nathaniel answered and said, Rabbi, you're the son of God. You're the king of Israel. And Jesus answered him, because I said to you, I saw you under a fig tree, you, you believe? You're going to see greater things than these. So, I mean, like, here this, like, this, like, kind of like this word of knowledge Jesus gives him. And he's like, he's like, what? And Jesus is like, you ain't seen nothing yet. You just, just hang in there a little bit. You want to see some exciting stuff? Just hang in there because some awesome stuff is happening. In, in John 1, it says, He brought him to Jesus, and Jesus looked at him, and he said, You are Simon, the son of John. You shall be called Cephas, which means Peter, which we know means the rock, or the stone, the rock, right? Peter got his wrestler name. You know, it's, he got his... He got his new identity in Jesus. Isn't that awesome? Like, he's like, Your people call you this, which is reed, which means floppy and not very dependable and not trustworthy, and I'm calling you a solid rock. God gave him a new identity right there. And he was still about three years away from actually looking like what God called him to. But Jesus is like, that's who you are. That's who, isn't that awesome? 
I love that. I love that. I love people like that that have those same eyes of Jesus, and they don't see the big mess. They see the finished product. Man, visionaries. Man, we could all be like that, right? That is awesome. I love that. I love seeing people that way. I love just seeing a mess, and it's like, this is going to be amazing. Amen? I love doing projects. I love doing projects, like, around the house. And, like, early on, like, even, like, when we first, first got married, like, I started, like, building stuff like furniture by, you know, from, like, entertainment centers by, from scratch because I'm, like, all this is is a bunch of boards that you screw together and you pay, like, $500 for. I can cut boards and, you know, screw them together for $50, you know? And so I remember we were making stuff in the apartment and I'm, like, filling the hole. And Joanna was, like, really nervous and it came out pretty good, right? Everyone liked it. And then that was my first try. And she was, after a while, she was like, you know what? I can't see it, but I trust you. Because, you know, you're seeing something, and it's, and it's, it's seen until it happens. And so when we can see stuff in people, that's seeing like Jesus does. Amen? And so Peter got his new name, and... and the bringers, you know, they didn't know much, right? You know, they didn't have to know a lot. They just brought them to Jesus. You know, sometimes we, we feel like we've got to have the answer to every question, like I was saying. No, you don't. Jesus has the answer to every question. Jesus is the answer, right? And so we don't have to know everything. That's just, you know, when Jesus does his thing, we just bring him to Jesus. That's what happened to me. My dad brought me to church and brought me to Jesus, and I didn't even want to go, and he brought me. And that's when I experienced the presence of God and transformation. When I, when I was in high school, I got grounded. Imagine that. So, let's see. I could tell who the bad kids were. Let's see. Oh, yeah, definitely one of them right there. No, I'm just kidding. But I got grounded, and so my dad was like, since you're grounded, you're going to come with us to this Christian concert. I didn't have a choice. Apparently, he would use, like, these groundings as excuses to bring me to church things. <clears throat> so it was a Christian concert. Remember, remember Carmen back in the day? Yeah, okay. Back in the 80s, like, he was, like, especially 80s and early 90s. He was like the bomb. He would fill up these giant venues. And so I I didn't want to go. I was like, I was, I was just really, I was, you know, I was a teenager who not following Jesus. And I was like, oh, so my buddy Jojo, I was like, bro, he was like, not like never been to church ever. I was like, bro, I'm grounded. And I got to go to this Christian concert. Will you come with me? You know, it's going to have, like, weird Christian stuff and be weird. Just so you know, <laughs> full warning is going to be, like, who knows what's going to happen. I'll just warn you. And he's like, yeah, okay, cool, you know. I was like, all right, cool. So now he's coming with me. We drive all this way to the city to go to this concert, and I'm, I'm like, embarrassed, right? right? I'm embarrassed because of all this stuff. And then, like, you know, we're there, and I'm just, like, just standing there. And then he's like... And he's looking at me, and I'm like, I knew just enough Jesus to know, all right, don't, you, you don't have to jump in the pool. You're not jumping in the pool, but don't stop anybody else from jumping in the pool. You know what I'm saying? I was like, I, did, I, was like, I don't want to get in trouble. I, I still kind of believed in God, but I knew I was not following God. I was rebelling. You know what I'm talking about? So I was like right there. And I was like, all right, I, I better behave myself and not look as, because I wanted to show them that I was embarrassed so that I didn't, you know, that I'm not with these people. You ever do that? Like, oh, I'm not with them. So, but now I'm confused because he's liking it. And so I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm a little bit with these people. <laughs> and he's like, and he's like, hey, it's a pretty good concert. You know, and he does like, you know, carved all the smoke and the lights and, choo, choo, you know, I mean, like really cutting edge at the time. And, and, and like, I'm just like, oh, yeah, I think. Okay, I'm like, I don't know what to say, what to do. And then so 
Carmen does the altar call. And I'm like, oh boy. Oh man. And then like, my buddy is like, And he goes up down for the altar call. And I'm like, I don't know what to do. I just stood there. I just stayed. And he went down on the altar call and he prayed. And he accepted Jesus as his Savior. And, and like about, I don't know, five or ten years ago, I was in Dallas for a conference. And I knew he lived there. And I was like, hey, let's get together and, let's get together and have a meal. And so I met his wife. And, and we had dinner. And he's following Jesus now. Praise the Lord. Going to church and everything. And I was like, How? and we were talking. He's like, remember that concert? And I was like, yes. <laughs> now, it took a little minute for it to stick because, you know, we were in high school together. I knew JoJo all through high school. And there was some, you know, we were both, but something happened. It wasn't my spirituality. Wasn't my giftedness. Amen. Wasn't my knowledge of the word. Yeah. All I did is bring him with. Amen. That's it. Yeah, you can clap for that. That's pretty good, right? Kind of, kind of takes the pressure off a little bit, don't it? Right? Here, you know what? Let me tell you this. In following Jesus, like you can mess up a lot. But don't do the mess up part where we don't try. It's hard to fix that one. But man, just jump and go. And like, I just brought him. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't my ability. Which kind of leads me to the next point. Watch this. With the Samaritan woman, right? The town comes out to meet Jesus. John 4, 42. They said to the woman, it is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is indeed the Savior of the world. See, something happens. See, like, they, she told them, she's like, hey, this is the Messiah. And they're like, okay, maybe. All right, okay, let's see. But then when they saw Jesus for themselves, they're like, oh, you know, listen, you told us, and we kind of believed, but now we know. Right? See, it wasn't her ability to tell them. It was Jesus' ability to reveal himself. That's powerful. That's amazing. Watch it again. It's not just a one-off. Matthew 16, 16. Simon Peter replied. Remember, this is just, just before he, like, Jesus tells him about the, the, he's going to deny him three times. So definitely Peter had those high-low moments very close together sometimes. And so he's like, just before, this is the high Simon Peter replied, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. Ooh, right? That's a good one, right? It's like, thank you, Jesus. Yes. Yes, the father did reveal that to me. You know, right? Right? It's pretty cool, right? Pretty good moment. Pretty exciting for Peter. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm not even going to go to the denying part. You know why? Because watch this. John 140. One of the two, we read this, who heard John speak and followed him was Jesus and Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother, Simon, and he said to him, Peter, wait, we have found the Messiah, which means the Christ. Is this contradiction? No. He told him with his words, we found the Messiah. So he had already heard it, but it was really the Spirit of God who revealed it, right? There's a difference between hearing and even just sort of, oh, okay, but then he met Jesus for himself, and God the Father revealed that to him. Amen? That's powerful. That comes from just being in God's presence. See, we can do, we do all the inviting, we do the bringing, we do, do this thing, and you know what? But God, God does the divine work in the hearts. 
He does that transformation. In John 15, 26, the last part of the verse, it says, The Spirit of truth who proceeds about the Father, he will bear witness about me. See, it's, it's not about our own ability or gifting or whatever. Like I was saying with JoJo, I was like the worst inviter ever. I would win the prize. I didn't even want to go. I was being forced to against my will. I just wanted, I just wanted sympathy company. I didn't have a right heart. How... Just think about that for a minute. Like, we're supposed to have a right heart, right? It, it, surely it makes things better, right? But even with a wrong heart, no desire, no concern for JoJo's soul, God's like, good enough for me. I can work with that. That's kind of crazy. It's either his grace or it's not his grace. Let me tell you. It's either his ability or it's not. See, we think like, oh, it's my abil- a little bit of a combo. It's really his ability. Yeah. Obey him. Do what he says. Pray up. You know, yeah, do all the stuff. But, man, we trust in him because it's God that's really doing that work. Amen? Amen? Yeah. So what does it really mean to bring someone to Jesus? Well, you know, obviously, like, if I'm at Walmart and I pray with somebody or, or even lead them to the Lord in the parking lot, We're bringing them to Jesus, right? Right there in that moment. But I want to show you something different than that. What do we call the church? It's called the body of Christ. Okay, Colossians 1.18 says this. And he is the head of the body, the church, right? Ephesians 1.22 says this. And he put all things under his feet, and he gave him as head over all things to the church, which is the church body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Hmm, okay, another one? Wait. Romans, Romans 12, 4. For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function, so we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually members one of another. So in a way, when we bring people to Christians gathered together, we're bringing them to the body and representation of Jesus Christ. Amen. See, because, and I, and I get it, it's, it's both and. Like when I'm out there, I'm representing Jesus to the, to the world, but there's something different when the body gets together. You know why? Because we all have different parts. We all have different p- functions and giftings and abilities and different impartations you know, like I go out there, I'm just the thumb. Hello, let me tell you about Jesus. You know, I'm just the thumb. But if I'm with Joanna, it's like both of us. You know, if we're with a group, it's like a whole hand. And when it's the body, it's, it's the full representation of Jesus. Because no one culture, no one uh, age group, no one gift set, no, we all together represent the body of Christ. Isn't that powerful? So we're like when we bring them not to the building, but anytime there's a gathering of believers, right? We are the church, Jesus. You know, sometimes we're the only church, we're the only Jesus people are going to see. Right? Just that's it. You know, and when I when I was bringing JoJo, like I brought him sorta, right? I brought him to that Christian concert. You know why I was bringing him to to church? It was a gathering of believers, and he saw the community of believers and the presence of God, and something happened. If the youth are hanging out, that's church. They bring a friend, they're bringing them to church. Fall festival, like we did in the parking lot, and it was fun, all them people were coming and seeing church, right? Bible study, like on Wednesday night, so you got a double announce there, Indio, so you're welcome. (laughs) That's church. You bring a friend, you just brought them to church. Anytime there's a group of Christians together, it's church slash and the representation of Jesus to this world. And let me tell you, see, that's why I take it so seriously. Like when you bring a family member in or a friend here, 
Like, to me, it's just like, whew, okay. Like, I, I just, I just, I'm like, hey, you know, I always try to meet everybody. I was looking around, and like so many people I didn't get to say hi to this morning. So see me after, but I like, especially when I see someone bringing in a friend, because I recognize not just me, but my own personal responsibility is I'm representing Jesus to this person as a representative of the church, as a part of the church, as the body of Christ. And so is everyone here representing Christ together, communally. That's why I love it when I see so many people being friendly and reaching out and sharing and encouraging and welcoming. That's Jesus. It's so vital, so vital, that we as the body of Christ accurately represent Jesus. That's why I'm always saying, love God, love people. Like, it's pretty simple. You know, we build off of those two foundations, and then we're really representing who Jesus is. And we, we don't just invite. Luke 14, 16 says, But he said to him, A man once gave a great banquet, and he invited many. And at the time for the banquet, he sent his servants to say to those who had been invited, Come, everything's ready. But they all like began to make excuses. Oh, man, you know, I got to work. I got to wash my car. I got to do my thing. I got a dentist appointment. Verse 21, and he said, all right, well, forget it. You know, forget it. Go out. Verse 21, go out quickly to the streets and lanes of the city. Bring in the poor and the crippled, the blind and the lame. And the servant said, sir, we've done as you have commanded. It's done. And there's still room. And the master said to the servant, go out into the highways and the hedges and compel people to come in that my house may be filled. He's like, go every nook and cranny. Be like, all right. And he didn't just say, you want to come to church? You want to come to the banquet? He's like, no, that's not the attitude that I want. He's like, be like, hey, there's this awesome banquet. The food is going to be great. Dude, you're homeless. You don't have anything to eat. You might as well come. Sunday morning, you got nothing to do. You know, come on. It's going to be great. You know what? I'll buy you lunch afterwards. What? Just compel them. You know, I've invited a lot of people to church, and a lot of them are like, nope, no thanks, maybe, whatever. But you know what? Some say yes. Remember Steve Aslan? He used to come here to the church back in the day. I used to go to his bank when he was just a teller, and, or no, a um, personal banker, and I'd go and sit at his desk like every week for like 45 minutes, and we'd just chat. And then I'd invite him to church, and he would never come to church. Like for a couple of years. And then finally, like his life, everything hit the fan. He called me up. And God started moving in his life, and he came with me to church, and he accepted Jesus as a Savior, and he's still following Jesus to this day. You know, sometimes it takes a little time. We've got to be a little stubborn. I like to say, I'm more stubborn that you're going to heaven than you're stubborn for going to hell. <laughs> just be like, you know what? I really, really want you to go to heaven. I'm just going to just... Stick it out, whatever. That means if they get mad at you and treat you poorly, you forgive. It means they've kind of hurt your feelings by not returning the calls or whatever. Forgive. It means they've always said no, like they're never going to say yes. Mm, I don't know. They might. Maybe it takes 1,001 invites. Now, I get it. Don't be annoying and be, you know, use wisdom and all that, but but don't give up either, right? Maybe a little annoying, just a little bit. It means, sometimes it means bringing them. I used to, when I worked at Disney, I, I made these, these signs, and they said free rides to church, and I put my phone number in the little things. You Remember, you said right out on the bottom and peel it off. I handmade it. I went to all the Disney break rooms around the different parks, and I just put it up and, like, see what happens. And people call me from, like, different parks, you know, workers, and they'd be like, hey, you know, I, and a lot of them, like, were college program kids that didn't have cars. They'd be like, I'll, I'll go to church with you. Some of them were not Christian. Some of them were Christian, and, 
And I was just going and picking them up and bringing them to church. We had a joke because the way I drove. <laughs> I said part of my ministry is getting people to pray on the way to church, you know. <laughs> but, but uh, you know, we go and get them. That's what we see with all these people. that I, We don't really see too many examples of just inviting, right? We don't see a lot of examples like, hey, you know, if you want to come, just come. We say, listen, come with me. Let's go together. Come on, let's go. Come on, come on. I'll go get you. We see, we see the, the four guys bringing the guy to Jesus. We see the brothers getting the brothers. They went and got their brothers and said, come on, let's go. Let's see. Let's do it. Isn't that what harvesters do? They go, they don't be like, hey, we, you want to jump into the barn? That'd be cool. Be easier. No, they're like, whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. come on, let's bundle it, let's go. Isn't that what fishermen do? Hey, fish, you want to, ju- is that how it works? Richard, do they just jump onto the shore or your boat and be like, hey, fish, jump in the boat? I mean, maybe once in a while, right? But most of the time, you got to do something. You got to throw a net. You got to put a pole out there. You got to do something and reel it in, right? We're going to bring in the catch. Isn't that what Jesus is going to do for us at the end of the age? He's going to go and gather the church and bring us home? Or do you not believe in the rapture? I think this church does believe in the rapture, right? Amen? Amen? Indio's ready for it. Indio's ready for He's like, this week, Lord, I'm ready. <laughs> Jesus is going to literally come and get us. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. This should be in our DNA. He already came and got us first time, and he's like, hey, he came down to earth, and he's like, come with me, and we're in that process of going with him right now, and he's going to come back a second time, and he's going to say, listen, all right, now it's, now it's final. Everybody else that is already here, and you guys now, y'all coming with me. Amen. And he's like, hey, this is what I want our heart to be. They're like, bring people to me. You know, 82%, it says, of unchurched have said in a survey If somebody invited them, they would go to church. Even if half of them are lying, that's still like 41%. That's pretty good. Another statistic says only 2% of Christians have invited someone to church in the past year. Now, I think we're like way higher in this church because I see a lot of people bring people. And I'm not trying to make you feel guilty. But I'm just trying to say that statistic says this. It's easier to get unsaved people to church than it is to get church people to invite them or bring them. So we don't want to be like that, do we? No, man. We want to be the people like, you know what? Let's bring them. They might say yes. Invite them. Friends, enemies, coworkers, whoever, strangers. You know, Jesus, he is the great inviter. And everyone that he met went and got somebody else. So like, and they brought him because Jesus is so amazing. They wanted to share. We don't have to know everything. Jesus is from, you know, Nazareth. I don't know. I guess he's from Nazareth, but he's also kind of from Bethlehem. I, I really don't have it all figured. Just come and see him. We'll figure it out, right? We don't have to know it all. You know, there's a lot of people who just don't have the strength or the will or whatnot on their own. Like the, the paralytic, he wasn't going to get to Jesus by himself. One friend couldn't do it, took four. They all grabbed a corner. And some of them were digging the hole in the roof. They're like, we're getting you to Jesus, man. One time, we were doing this Bible study. And remember at Leon's house? And his brother was in the other room and didn't want to didn't want to come to the Bible study. And so I was like, I was like, hmm. I was like, I should go get him. And he's like, well, he's in bed, he's sleeping. I'm like, hmm. I should probably go get him. <laughs> and like, sometimes, sometimes we need to let our figuring everything out just just pause for a minute and just take a chance. Sometimes. So I just went in the room, and I saw him in bed, and I'm like, why don't you come and join us? 
And then he's like, no, I'm tired. I was like, his toe was sticking out of the covers. I was like, I just grabbed his ankle, and I was like, started pulling, and he's grabbing like the headboard, and he's holding. I'm like, and I started dragging him out of the bed, and he's falling on the floor. And I was like, bro, I'm not leaving until you get out of this bed and come to the Bible study. And in my head, I'm thinking, oh, man, now I said it. Like, I don't know if he's going to, this may end really badly, right? Like, like if I'm teaching someone how to soul win and win, I would not say do it that way, right? Because, like, like, he could hit you. But instead, he got saved. So... his own, even with a nice invite, maybe swing by. I remember knocking on Steve's door when he was in the house and he wouldn't come to the door and I was banging on it. And he told me, he's like, yeah, I was, I was going to open the door, but I had beer cans everywhere. I didn't want you to see it. I was like, I don't care. He's like, I know, I know. And I decided, you know what? Did I waste my time? he didn't come with me that time or did I invest time because he saw how that somebody really cared to just keep showing up until he finally came to church man let me tell you something I remember when I was going through my dark time I just lost my mom and I was in regular college in Gainesville and, and I kind of was like warming up to the gospel and I just was like of Jesus.
Senhor, vamos.